Hey, it's Matt here. We've got ourselves a project. So this mess that you're looking at here is one of those kaleidoscope LED projector lights that you put in your yard. We bought a bunch of these last year and a bunch more this year. And a few weeks ago, my wife comes up to me and says, hey, this one's not working. So it was kind of surprising because they're all pretty new. So I don't know if this one burnt out already or if it was dead from the factory, but I really, really want to fix it. So I think these are pretty popular lights. Uh, they're the Jemmy brand, G-E-M-M-Y uh, dot com. So I figured, yes, I already have it all apart, but I may as well film uh, actually fixing it and as a bonus, maybe figuring out how to put this thing together. And while I fix it, I'll also show you how these things work. So it's a really simple device and seems like a reasonable design. So the uh the you got your mains power coming in here uh and inside of this little box uh what we do is we have a little circuit here uh that converts uh converts the power to dc if i can just uh, pop it open all right so that's never going to look factory new again uh, but you can see basically you got a little board here that takes uh, the uh, mains power coming out here and outputs DC power here. But if you look carefully, that's not the whole story because you have a second set of wires here that is just taking the mains voltage and bringing it up to this motor. Um, so this motor actually runs on 120 volt AC. So don't go digging around inside it while it's plugged in, bad things will happen. Uh, but this is the motor that actually spins this little kaleidoscope uh, piece of plastic and creates that cool shiny effect and you can use it to get snowflakes or cobwebs or stuff like that uh, shining on your house. And then underneath it, of course, you have the light source, which is simply three LEDs in series. And what I figured out earlier before I thought to film this was that one of these guys had burnt out. So I'll show you quickly again how that's done on one of the remaining LEDs. And let me zoom you in. So all I need to test the LED is to pull out my handy or in this case kind of cheap off-brand not as handy multimeter and switch it over to diode mode. And what that's going to let us do is just check each LED one by one. Now, I didn't want to get this piece of plastic off because it's uh, put on here by this like little one-way snap ring thingamabobber. And the problem is once I pull this off, it's going to be such a huge pain to get that ring back on. I don't have another ring on me. I didn't want to mess with it. But if you can see, I've got the LEDs exposed here and... If I just put my, ugh. this is so much easier when you're not filming. So I got my multimeter here and as you can hopefully see, maybe, yep. Yep. So two things happen. One on the multimeter, we can see two and a half volts going through. Perfect. And we can also see that this LED is lighting up. So that's a telltale sign that yes, the LED does work. And you can do that on the other one as well. Um, there we go. Boom. So those two LED lights are working, but the third one wasn't. And what I discovered was that I, the only place that I could really find these exact ones and find them for a reasonable price and not have to do like a you know hundred dollar digikey order to get the free shipping uh, was on Amazon. And it was one of those items that's not even prime. It ships directly from China. So basically here we are a few weeks later and I'm finally coming back to this project. The good news is I got a lot of these LEDs. And oh, by the way, I'll link them up in the description below in case you're in the same jam. So I got a ton of these things. I can fix a lot of these lights, uh, which hopefully I won't have to. We'll see how these things hold up. Uh, but let's fire up the soldering iron and just quickly get this LED replaced. So first things first, I've got my contacts here. I already desoldered uh, the old LED, as I said. So I do still need to clean up the contacts. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some solder wick. 
And again, I apologize for this little plastic shield. I'm almost, almost tempted to take it off just for you, the viewer. Uh, but again, I'm really not sure if I'm going to be able to get this damn thing back on. So we're going to roll with it. So I got my soldering iron nice and cleaned up and I'm just going to go through, actually, even before I use the solder wick, I'm going to, well, let's, let's see how that works. I might have to tin the pads to really get this last gunk off. Um, yeah, I'll probably do that uh, because they're using lead free solder here. And if I put some leaded solder on, it should end up flowing a little bit better. So. Let's do that real quick. Again, a little bit of acrobatics. I've already lost one screw on the case, by the way, so uh, you can't win them all. There we go. Just just a little, little solder on the pad there. Kind of a wimpy amount, but should be okay. So let's give this a try. Just clean up the pads nicely. Yep, yeah, it's flowing. It's flowing beautifully and it's getting stuck because uh, I need to practice my solder wicking skills. But there we go. All cleaned up. Now we do the second pad. And to be fair, this also doesn't have to be quite perfect. So it's just a little LED light. It's not drawing much current. It's got a nice fat pad. It'll be fine. There we go. We're good. All right, so next thing I wanna do is I wanna put a little bit of flux on these pads. It's probably, probably should have done that too when wicking the solder, but oh well. I'm gonna put some flux on there. Uh, this is just the syringe stuff. You can use a flux pen, you can use whatever you got. And then I probably wanna pre-tin my pads here. So I'm gonna do that. Get a little bit of solder on there and then everything else will flow a little better. Okay, I've got you zoomed in here. So now we're gonna have to go ahead and get this LED replaced. And apparently I have to make a choice here between you being able to see this on camera and me being able to see what I'm doing. And apparently I chose you, so please like and subscribe this channel because apparently you mean a lot to me. So I've got my little LED here. I've got the spot where the LED needs to go. And before I plop that LED on, I did read that it's a good idea to put a little bit of thermal paste on because these LEDs get hot. Uh, there's like little, I think there's multiple little LEDs in here all chewing up power and doing their thing. So they get hot. And what happens is the little board here actually acts as a heat sink. So I'm just taking, oops, taking a giant gob of thermal paste here. Um, never been quite good at any of these type of delicate surgical operations. Um, alrighty, well, moving forward. First thing I wanna do is I wanna tack this LED on to the pad. The pad's looking pretty nasty right now because of all the flux residue here. And because I actually tried tacking it on earlier and I forgot the thermal paste. And now I'm just feeling lazy. So I'm just gonna re-tack it. Um, again, we're not, we're not doing surgery here. And quite frankly, I wouldn't be a very good surgeon. So you can see I've tacked on the LED here. So it at least stays put while I've got this thing angled at all sorts of crazy angles, again, for you. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna just do some proper soldering here or the closest thing to it and actually get this uh, ground pad soldered properly. Probably get some flux on there too. Just make everything flow a little bit nicer. Don't worry about all the little residue and stuff on the board. You can clean it up later. Just get some rubbing alcohol. Um, but uh, I do, want to get this thing soldered on. So let's see what happens. So uh, I've got the negative pad well, pretty well soldered on. So I'm going to do the same now with the positive because remember I tacked it on. It's on there, but it's not on there very well. So 
I go back and get a nice bit of solder on there. I'm not quite happy with this one. There we go. So I just heated it up a little bit more, got the solder to flow. So now that LED is on there and there's a 50-50 chance that I didn't mix up the positive and negative while I was doing that. In fact, before I fire it up, because uh, I've got myself paranoid, I'm just gonna double check that this LED works. You'd think this is something that I would have done before sticking it on the board, but that is crazy talk. Whew, scared myself there. Um, wasn't lighting up because I wasn't in diode mode. There we go. All right, so I think we're good. So before I end up stuffing all of this stuff back in like a sausage, uh, hopefully a little neater than a sausage. First and foremost, let's see if this thing worked. Avert your eyes. Ooh, yes. Yes, it's lighting up and it's nice and bright and horrendously blinding. So we're going to turn that right off. Uh, but we got it. It's fixed. All the lights seem to be shining at about the same brightness. Um, everything is fixed to perfection. So. Now the hard part of this job, which is to get all of this assembled back together. All right, it's together and I only lost one screw. Let's see if she fires up. All right, and she works. I think it's disco time. If you like this video and you wanna see more like it, then be sure to give it a nice big thumbs up. And of course, hit the subscribe button.